What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build, a place where we believe things are better when they come in twos. Now, what are your favorite things that come in twos? Hmm. Well, there's boobs and <laughs> boobs. But what about trees? That's right, I'm talking about Two Trees' latest offering to the laser market, the TS2. Woo hoo hoo! It's fancy, it has racing stripes. So I know I told you guys that I'm kind of done with putting diode lasers together and reviewing them. It just got to a point where it was kind of like same stuff, different day, and it's just, it's, it's not fun for me to make videos about the same thing over and over. If I liked doing the same thing over and over, I would have never quit my day job. So I promise you guys, I wouldn't review anything else unless it was innovative in some fashion. So let's take a look at a couple of the just really unique features of this laser first, just right off the bat. I'm not even gonna say them until the end of the video, you can see them right now. The first thing that really caught my eye about this laser is this window right here because this is laser safety glass. I have runts, I have children, so occasionally they come out into the garage while the laser's running and to me this is a really cool feature to have so when they're at eye level here they're not looking into the beam. All right, next up we have a automatic Z axis. So this little guy right here, you set a macro up in light burn and when you hit that, it will automatically focus your Z axis. Sorry if this is hard to see. So I have a macro set for the Z lift, engrave, cut two millimeter, three millimeter, five millimeter, eight millimeter. It will auto focus for each of those. Okay, so you're gonna place your material you hit that Z probe. You say we're gonna engrave. So it finds where it is and then it adjusts it accordingly. So that's two millimeter, three millimeter, five millimeter, and eight millimeter. You're starting to see this on more lasers now, but this has an integrated air assist. It runs down the drag chains along with everything else and is just hooked up right here. Okay, and that's not the only reason we're reviewing this laser, but those are a couple of the key things that stuck out to me from the beginning. A couple of innovations, because what we need is more innovations when it comes to diode lasers, guys. We need to see this innovation because we need these companies to continue to develop their machines and not just sit there on their hands. And you guys know what's coming next. It's time for Nerd Facts. So the footprint for this machine is a little bigger than what we're used to. It boasts a 450 millimeter by 450 millimeter engraving area. Now you've got some bigger components, especially with these rails built the way they are. You've got a nice pass through area here. But when I got this in the mail, it came in three boxes, two trees, one box. One box, man. It scared the living bejeebies out of me. What the hell's a bejeebies? If I didn't mention, this laser is a 10 watt diode laser. So we're gonna give it a little, a little test right now. Let's, uh, let's see what we can cut. They are boasting it will cut eight millimeter plywood in one pass. Let's check this out. Shall we? If only I just had some eight millimeter plywood lying around someplace. Hmm. Great big gobs of greasy, grimy gopher guts. Little dirty birdie feet. That's too thick, so let's look someplace else. Nope. Hoo hoo! Okay, we're gonna set our Z to cut eight millimeter. frame and then X gonna give it to you well that just stopped 
All right, we had a slight technical difficulty, so we are going to set this again. Okay, so I was having a bit of an issue with it not running the way I wanted it to. So first rule of thumb with diode lasers, if they're not behaving the way you think they should be, make sure that your firmware is up to date. There was a firmware update that I had to do. So let's try this again. Okay, we have focused, we have framed. We are going to set our cut. All right. Okay, I cannot get this thing to run any slower than 240 millimeters per minute uh, without setting the flame alarm off. I do have the air assist hooked up. I'm just trying to see if I can get a clean cut. Um, I tried five passes and was unsuccessful. So we're gonna try six here. Okay, so it's almost through. I mean, it cut the majority of the way through. Plywood's always a pain in the butt because of the, the glue. But at least the way they have this thing set up with the flame detection, you're not cutting eight mil ply with in one pass. Now, I tried to disable that in the G-code. The code that I have is $261 equals zero. That does not work for this laser. So I don't know how to disable it. I do have a call in to them or an email. You know what I'm talking about. Now I do have a little piece of pine here that's eight millimeters thick. Um, we're gonna run this at 60 millimeters per second, 100% power and see how it do. Okay, so with eight mil and air assist, it cuts straight through that pine. There's hope, woohoo! So flame detection is a very nice thing to have. Unfortunately, Diode laser companies have not really gotten this right yet. And usually it winds up being overly sensitive and the majority of users shut it off. So, it, it, I mean, it'd be nice to have if it worked right. But I wanna be clear, this is not specific to the TS2. I have not seen a diode laser yet that has good flame detection. Next up, you've got the compressed dot technology. It has a cutting accuracy of up to 0.01 millimeters. That's the same for engraving. They're actually calling it ultra fine engraving. So let's test that out. Okay, while it's engraving, let's talk about the smart autofocus. This is something that I think we need to see in more machines. Um, we see it in CO2 a lot. Uh, I have not seen it too much in diodes. I actually haven't seen it at all in any of the diodes that I've actually tested. This is a great idea to make sure your cuts and engraves are consistent without you trying to measure. This does support offline engraving. It does have a 32-bit chip with the LX6 microprocessor inside of it, uh, the, and it will connect to Wi-Fi. Flame detection. Emergency stop. Also have a tilt sensor in it so it'll shut off. I think if it's over, if it tilts more than 15 degrees. So then let's just break down the numbers because like, I know you nerds like the numbers. So let's do it. It can engrave up to 10,000 millimeters per minute. Laser wavelength is 445 plus or minus five nanometers. Like I said earlier, the engraving area is 450 millimeters by 450 millimeters so just slightly bigger than a lot of other diodes and the rest is kind of the usual suspects this thing probably weighs a little bit more than most of the other diode lasers considering the architecture of it it does have a little bit more beef to it it's a little bit more beefy where's the beef you remember that crazy lady it supports pretty much all the same file formats uh it is supported on laser gerbil and lightburn Okay, so I ran out of time yesterday to do pros and cons. I uh, had to go pick up the kids. So I did email Two Trees about the flame sensor business and I found out how to adjust it. So let's do that real quick. Okay, there are screws that are holding this piece on. Okay, I'll lift this guy up. And no flame sensor. Okay, apparently I was looking at that video all wrong. It's back here. Looks like you got two screws, one here, one here. Let's check it out. Little X is what you're looking for. And the more you turn it counterclockwise, am I turning that at all? I need a smaller one. The more you turn this counterclockwise, 
the less sensitive the sensor is. Turn this thing as far to the left as possible. I think that's as far as it'll go. Kind of hard to tell. But that's supposed to just kind of disable it. <clears throat> okay, that is 30 millimeters per minute at 100% power. Um, the air assist isn't dialed in very well. Like I said, I've, I've got it kind of Frankenstein together, but that didn't even start to come out of the back. So I have to call BS on eight millimeter plywood cuttage in one uh, pass. Either that or the macro for their eight millimeter uh, settings is incorrect. <clears throat> Does seem awfully far away from the board. Let's get back to pros and cons. First pro is definitely the autofocus for the Z-axis. That is something that all diode lasers going forward need. The second pro for me has got to be this little window right here. Like I said, if you guys don't have little ones or you're single or like everybody knows to stay out of the shop, probably not as big a deal for you. But for me, like my kids are in here a lot and they glance over at the lasers all the time. I would say so much so that the more I tell them not to, the more they do it because those little crotch goblets. Ugh. Third pro has to be the construction. I really like the fact that it has drag chains that kind of keep everything out of the way. These rails are extra high so you can slide stuff under pretty easy. It's a, uh, it's good choices were made on this. Next would be price. It's on the lower end of the price point for a 10 watt diode laser. Way to go two trees on managing to stay affordable while still innovating. The size of the engraving area is definitely a pro as well. It's a little bit bigger than your average diode, so you get a little bit more working space for still a pretty affordable price. Now let's talk cons. My first con is gonna be the fact that this thing does not cut through eight millimeter plywood like it says it should. And that is using their settings. They have a macro set up in Lightburn to adjust for eight millimeter. So you saw the results of that. And the second con has gotta be that flame sensor. Until they can get something that works better, it's, most of them just detect UV light. They're incredibly hard to get dialed in without getting false positives a lot, which stops the laser and all that stuff. I appreciate the thought, and it's a good idea to put into a machine. It just hasn't been optimized yet, I guess. And I gotta say this, I understand why it's there. It does make it adjusting it easier, but it doesn't go with the overall aesthetic of the machine very well. Um, it looks like I'm trying to turn on the water from the hose type deal. Um, I would like to see this look a little, a little different, but that's just an aesthetics. That's just a me issue. And my only other con is really their documentation is a little difficult to understand at times. Uh, for a newbie, it would be a little bit more difficult to put this machine together. And the program they give you to change the firmware is all in Chinese. Now, one of those buttons actually changes it to English. I stumbled across that on accident, but there's no indication that you can switch it over to English uh, while you're trying to update your firmware. So what do I think? I think it's a pretty decent unit. It's kind of, it, it's kind of falls in the, in the middle there with a lot of other diode lasers. But I will say this, Two Trees does continue to innovate. They have some really good ideas here that I want to see flushed out further. <laughs> I said flesh. <laughs> Real quick before we look at the engraving, I just wanted to point out one other con I would say of this. There's no dedicated power button to this. They're using the emergency stop as the power button. So in order to turn it on or off is, is that. And I don't think you should use the emergency power off button as the power button. Okay, so take a look at this engrave. I wish it was a little darker, but we've got really clean lines. You can see some really good detail. I would definitely say that that is a good looking engrave. So I gotta give them props for their engraving skills. Hooty hoo. So final thoughts. I think it's a pretty decent unit for its price point and its power. Remember, it is a 10 watt laser. So you're getting twice the lasery goodness of a five watt. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Um, do you dig it? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for playing. And now I gotta get to work. Ooh. <sighs> I feel like I have to poop. Mm. Mm, lunch was good. All right, that was just creeper all the way around.
not just sit there on their hands with their fingers up their butts. Up their butts, kids. Up the butts. I'm talking two knuckles.